Also, my bells get annoying, let me know. <laughs> Give us a jangle. Give us a jangle. <laughs> I feel like it's very festive. Yeah, I feel like Mariah Carey. You know, <laughs> like, like she should just, you know, like, Chief Five! Chief Five! Austin! Yeah! It's like, I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to hit that note. <laughs> oh, Gabby, we have Gabby here? Yeah, Gabby. All right. Last minute special guest. Gabby! 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 New. I'm like sweaty and disgusting right now. Um, hello, I'm Gabby. Um, on social media, I'm Gabby New Cosplay, and I wasn't supposed to be here, but now I am. So I'm just kind of vibing. I'm helping them with whatever, and probably will field some questions at the end. But um, I've been cosplaying for like 11, 12 years. Um, I actually competed in 2016 at the New York Comic Con. What is that contest called? Cosplay. Oh, cosplay. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, I competed in that, um, and I've been published. Um, I also was on a Twitch cosplay competition show a couple years ago, and I just uh, like making things and having fun. So, thank you guys for being here.
So I never I never reported from them before. They sell a lot of real silk. It's kind of like dead stock and like if you see it, you see it. Um, so I've never specifically, I bought like one yard of like this gorgeous real pink satin like during Black Friday. Go, 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 go buy from them. Um, and it was stunning, but personally for me, way too expensive for me to use for a cosplay. Um, Spandex World, also here in New York City, it's great if you're looking for- Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. Courtney yeah, swears by it. Yeah, but you will understand why I love Spandex World a little later in the panel, but just know. <laughs> No, that is my store. The guy knows me in there. <laughs> They're also really nice there. You can haggle. Like, I found a um, replica fabric from the Sarah Mood of the Moon shows from there. And the guy was like, listen, listen. I see you're really eyeing this fabric. I'll give it to you for, like, this price. And I was like, thank you, thank you. Because it was $50 a yard. And he gave it to me, I think, for, like, $35 a yard. I was like, thank you. Be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Top Fabrics, uh, a lot of the Game of Thrones cos uh, cosplays, costumes that are sourced from Top Fabrics, it's a British company. Um, and so if you're try looking to recreate any of those outfits or uh, any a lot of film outfits, specifically, like I said, sourced in the UK, or if it's a UK designer, it will probably be from Top Fabrics. And then on my fabric store, a lot of the Moonies uh, serve by it. And uh, I, I included this in there, but that, that screenshot is from Move Fabrics. And you can actually do a quiz to find a fabric that you're looking for. You can click like, oh, I'm making a costume. Oh, I'm making a dress. Oh, like you're making Princess Serenity. Like, okay, I know I want an organza. And you can source it through that way. So if you don't know where to start, it's a great place to start. And I wish more cosplayers knew about it. So go on Moon and do a little fabric quiz. Just to oh, yeah. This is me. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to add about textures and different types of fabric. I feel like using and mixing different textures and making a costume is one of the easiest ways to kind of elevate it and make it look like it has more dimension, especially if you plan on competing on a stage at some point. Uh, and always pre-wash your fabrics, public, public service announcement. In terms of other options that are local, I do agree that there are a lot more expensive options in the uh, fashion district, which is a walk from here, actually. Like it's a mile. 30, it's a mile. That's a, that's a New York walk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say the benefits, aside from haggling, are you can, you can find hidden treasures more often when you're browsing in person compared to when you're searching for something specific online. So I always tell people, if you want a basic, like a reliable matte satin. Um, I feel like someplace like Joann's or online fabric store is not only the best quality, but also the most cost-effective way to go. Whereas if you're looking for something competition worthy maybe, or just a, like you guys said, a passion project, maybe like dead stock, something you wouldn't find anywhere else, I feel like browsing in person in the fashion district is the way to go. Bring a reusable bag, wear walking shoes, and bring cash. Um, Daytona Trinnings, one of my favorite places, uh, more on the affordable side. They used to have two really fat orange oh, store cats. Yeah. Yes, remember? <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, I, I really so hope they didn't die. Um, they're, they're still around? around? Thank you. Oh, bless his heart. All right, all right, living strong, living strong. Um, Moon also used to have uh, Swatch, Swatch the Bulldog, French Bulldog, so cute, uh, rip. Pacific Trimming, very blingy, has every colored zipper you can ever imagine, probably has the best hours of a lot of the stores in the fashion district, garment district, whatever you want to call it. Um, and just to know a lot of stores there are, have very limited hours on Fridays and Saturdays, so if you want to go best that is Sunday, even better on a weekend, or a weekday. Uh, high trim and feathers, literally, literally, every kind of feather, rhinestone, gemstone, obsessed. They're very affordable too, and they also have an Etsy shop. Yes, and if you, any of my carnival people, you know, Trinidad, all that, you know, <laughs> Islanders, um, tr um, high trim, that's the place if you want to try and make your own like carnival outfit or something, that is your spot to go to. So, you know. 
Or any like sakizo if you're doing any like fancy beading or fancy gems. Bling it up. Color gems Bling it up. up there. I also find that rhinestones are one of the easiest, um, easiest, bliniest ways to kind of hide little mistakes on your costume. So if you like mess up a scene, just put a rhinestone on it. Fist. Easy. Life hack. Life hack. Costume hack. Um, spandex house, as these other two already mentioned, love it. Um, bargain politely, it works. Um, MJ trimming, it's more of a big, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a huge like, emporium vibe. Literally, like trimming. Literally, that's like, yeah. literally, that's like, it's the whole foods it. of trimming yeah, stores. Yeah, literally, it's all trimming. It's very pretty, kind of pricey. I don't know why I included it. I never shopped there. <laughs> <laughs> I also never shopped there. I never shopped there. It's, it's fun to go and touch things to I pet all the different trends. I feel like they're the most expensive out of everyone's yeah, body on it. Yeah, yeah. and then for rhinestones, that's where the high trends have the cheapest rhinestones yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah. And the selection, like I've seen different specifically shaped rhinestones there that are really, like sometimes you just don't know what to search online. You know, like you don't know the right keywords to find exactly what you're envisioning in your head. And I feel like that's why I'm still very pro shopping in person and again, like petting all the different fabrics and things. Um, that's... Okay, so painting your fabric. So I think painting your fabric is a great way to um, give yourself some dimension. And also like, okay, you can't find your fabric, right? So like, okay, what am I gonna do now? You can't find it, or it's too expensive, or <laughs> you can't find it. That's what it costs way of you. So um, I cost me a lot from the other ones, like I mentioned, and so I used, like I utilized um, Jacquard fabric paint, I believe that's what it's called, and I incorporated two tones of like a silver and a blue, and I mixed, I kid you not, like four different blue shades, two different silvers just to kind of achieve that overall look. And I used literally a cookie stencil to get that print. Okay, it doesn't have to be, you know, I don't know, super fancy. Um, and then the same thing with uh, the car standing outfit. I used um, a sponge to just kind of dab around the edges to, to give that gold look. And if you're looking for pleated fabric um, and you're crazy like me and you want to hand it, do it yourself, um, you can, or, or, mood fabric, I found out after I made the cosplay, carries pleated fabric for you. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to save yourself, like, 48 hours of straight pleating, uh, mood fabric. If you want to take the lazy way out. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, and then you could also make your fabric on Spoonflower. I know a lot of cosplayers swear by it. I'm actually wearing one designed by Chicky Pia or Sophia from, um, you can find her on Instagram and on Spoonflower. That's where I actually got the spoon fabric today. And you can make your fabric on there. Uh, they are also a little expensive as you can see by the numbers on there. But if you have a very specific fabric and you're like doing a, a, a competitive piece, right, and you want a very specific design, like I don't know, you're doing a Fire Emblem character and there's like some sort of like really detailed like um, emblems going on and you don't want to paint it yourself, you want a very clean, look just make just so you know it's gonna look screen printed on fabric there's not gonna really be dimension which is why i didn't do that for danny because um it would just look flat um so if you don't or you could actually um screen print it through spoonflower and then you could go back in later and add details on top um, so that's an option and uh they do also do black friday sales so use your coupons if you uh if you want that and also just keep in mind that all these like all the fabrics that you use, if you can use like buy your fabric and make a book, cause I have a whole book with all the fabrics I've ever used. That way I don't have to buy more fabric when I forget what fabric was good. So smart. Yeah, I'm like cause I wasted a lot of money <laughs> when I first started cosplaying because certain fabrics don't work for certain outfits. Um, so I just made a whole book and it just it's labeled for everything and I just go through the book to know what. I feel like this fabric for this outfit is so be. smart. <laughs> I wish I knew this like 10 years ago. <laughs> I still don't do that.
right, so trimming and lace, beading rhinestones. I am a beading rhinestone kind of person. I like being shiny, as y'all can see. <laughs> um, so trimming um, for lace. Lace is something that you can add on to other fabrics. So meaning if you have like, um, like a cotton or something, or maybe even this a corset that you brought and then you want to add dimension to that corset. Lace is something that's easily can be sewn to um, something like that. Or glue, glue, glue don't, don't, don't slack on the glue. <laughs> um, same thing for the beads. Beads come in two separate ways. So you have flat backs and then you have like the sewed on um, beads. Um, flat back are the ones that they do have, um, what do you call it, um, like an iron, um, it's like an iron like a heat, heat tool. Yeah, the heat, yeah, yeah. The heat tool ones that you can use. They also have the ones that you can use, like the glue on the back. Um, and then they also have the ones that you can sew. So, so that's two holes on both ends, and that's how you put your needle through. So it goes on. I think Mimi, that's how you did yours, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like that one. So you see like the detail for Serenity. Um, those are all sewn on individually. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm scared to do that yet. <laughs> um, but things like that all individually. For other trimmings, as you can see for the next one, um, those can be brought in design or if you do, um, there are websites also that you can look up to order trimming for specific things or you can get it actually made like for whatever design you would actually like it to be. Um, but trimming is always gonna be your best friend because it does save you a lot of time. Um, and when you see it in our next, Slide, I'll show you why. Uh, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we'll show you why. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so, yeah, so I like to take the easy way route, and uh, if I feel like being crazy and like hand sewing, like for serenity, I'll do that. Um, but I take the easy way out and buy like trimming that's already pre beaded, and I sew that on. Um, it's just a lot easier uh, if you're not like, I don't know, if you're competing and you don't think it's going to be that big of a factor then you can go this route. And you can layer trimmings. That's what I did here for um, Arwen. There is uh, two different trims that I layered on top of each other and the sleeve is also a different trim, but it matches the main trimming. And this is again, a way for you to elevate the, a cosplay. Um, if you've seen, if anyone's seen Lord of the Rings, the costumes are beautiful. Um, and Arwen wears this blue dress for like two seconds in the, the, the movie. So I have no idea how it looks like. And so I'm like, okay, how can I make this a little different, right? So that was my way of making it different. I used like these long satin sleeves and then I added all these trimmings and details to kind of just make it a little more sparkly and a little more stand out. And it looks great on camera and it looks great on the stage again if you're doing a competition piece. And then for Rhaenyra, I was going for more accuracy. And so in the show, they did use trimming and so I kind of looked for a very similar uh, pattern and I was able to find like this like triangular like arrow shape pattern and I hand sewn that onto the brocade and I added that to her um, like shoulder area over here and the bottom part I hand sewed two trims together to kind of make it look like one uniform trim and then you can like kind of cheat the system and then there's gold piping on the sleeves and so again all those little details are just something to make the outfit just a little more so that's that. I especially love the pre-made beaded trims because it's like the epitome of work smarter, not harder um, for equal payoff, in my opinion. That's true. <laughs> So remember when I told you I love spandex world? <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm a very flexible person. <laughs> um, spandex world is my love, joy, everything. I literally, the owner is like, hey, you're back. I'm like, yes, because you already know I need mobility in my cosplays. Um, if you ever were the most uncomfortable cosplay ever, um, it's, it's not easy. You're like stiff, you can't move. I hate. I hate that. I learned my lesson. I no longer do that to myself if I can avoid it. Um, so like the, all this fabric that you see um, is all spandex fabric, which is like metallic spandex. So this is also from Spandex World with the detailing of foam. So for the, if you see that the green um, cutouts like that for Jade from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, that's all foam underneath the fabric, so you can also use your foam to actually get certain angles for your fabrics that you might need. 
Um, so don't be scared. Like if you don't know how to like do armor work, fabric actually works just as well to go over foam pieces. Um, if you don't want to paint your um, armor pieces, use fabric. Not that hard. Just like that's glue. Literally glue, tears, and you know don't cut up. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. And then for the trimming, also I get that from um, Pacific Trims, which is the metals trimming. I was in that store on the for like an hour trying to figure out which one <laughs> I was gonna add. Um, and asking a friend, which I did, Mimi, um, my Discord chat, thanks. <laughs> um, trying to make sure to find the different, um, different trimmings, the different fabrics, because if I didn't, for me personally, if the gold didn't match the trimming that I brought before, then I try to like stay in the same area to try to stay in the same color zone because one gold probably wouldn't contrast for this one. And luckily for this costume, I actually won third place at um, Tropicon um, this past year. So, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, drop it, mobility. <laughs> like, you know. Like, I have yeah. a question. Yes. What influences your decision to buy like two-way stretch spandex or stretchy fabrics versus four-way? Yeah, so that is a difference for spandex, yeah. So two-way fabric uh, is something, if I know that I most likely just need to stretch out like this body-wise um, or like other way, depending on the outfit. So it really depends. So like this outfit right here is four-way fabric because I have to do so many different cutouts. I was gonna say, so it's whether you're doing split or yes. whether you're not yes. doing split. Yes, <laughs> like if I, like for a mode of combat, like, you know, you might see them all in armor. I'm like, you ain't moving in that like that. <laughs> Why, why? <laughs> um, but for Jay, like I already know that all her like her moves and stuff and whatnot. If I want to do that move in a photo shoot or I want to make it to the character, she's gonna have to move. So I can't have to use four way fabric for this. And for the cutouts here, it was so hard. If I would have used two way fabric and then sewed the, the black and the green together, it wouldn't have been the same way. If I um, if I would have messed up and put the two way fabric another way, because then one way couldn't have moved. It wouldn't have been as mobility. Um, as you might think. And then, um, just being like, you know, a little TMI, I have boobs. So I'm like, support. I'm like, support. You don't say. Yeah, you don't say. <laughs> um, so it's very hard to also try to balance that out with spandex fabric. So then keep that in mind too, because um, even, you know, hold on, I'm gonna do this. I can't explain this. <laughs> My bell jingle. <laughs> So like this part right here, like if I were to like, the way I did it was I like cupped it. So you see like how it's like a pleat inside of it. That way for the thing, I didn't really have to wear a bra so I just, just held up the titty very nicely. And that was, that was the only goal I needed. Big titty game, thank you. Oh, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that definitely matters, especially if you're doing armor. I would use, to, um, for me personally, I would use four-way fabric, especially if you're wrapping it around something. That way, um, it doesn't like give up one direction than versus the other. Gabby, you want a mic or something? Yeah, do you want a popular? <laughs> yeah. Have anything to Gabby, add? Gabby, just say hi. hi. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and so I think the one thing that I really want to emphasize, and I know Courtney like really want to emphasize this too, is that making your own. I always tell people like, don't try to look like the character. I know that's like what. I'm cosplaying the character. Don't try to look like the character, but also don't try to look like other cosplayers cosplaying the character. Because you're not going to look like them. And I learned that the hard way, okay? Uh, Do I not like compare them. yourself. Like, yeah, don't, don't compare know. yourself. And so uh, we're going to like be discussing um, different ways to make it your own. Or at least there, I think there's like two different ways. Yeah, so as, we, um, as I said earlier, I do costume design in theaters um, on like Broadway and um, off-Broadway, whatever happens. <laughs> um, so theater adaptions and stuff, so there's one way if you see on the top um, right, that is the theater adaption that I took it from. I was like, okay, I see it, but I don't really, um, I'm too broke to be trying to buy the same fabric that they did <laughs> for that musical. So I went to my local fabric store. That's another thing. If you have a local fabric store, support them. You don't have to go to move fabrics and stuff. Like support your local businesses. I've been going to my fabric store since I was 11. 
Mm. Who does a local business though? Yeah, I'm even a local business. Um, <laughs> like, I, li- I, like, I live in Queens, so I'm like mainly, yeah, yeah. Queen Pete, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, So um, the fabric store that I actually go to, and even though it's a little bit distant from me, it's called Storia Fabrics. Um, they're really friendly to me. They've been taking care of me since I was literally a child. Um, so they give me tips and stuff for how to do certain things. Um, this outfit is all sequins. Um, if you ever work with sequins before, um, <laughs> it's not easy. Um, your machine will hate you. Um, just straight up, there's nothing else to say about it. But just imagine, you know, that you know your like character in musical. Just think of it as if you were that character, because this person that's also playing the musical is not the character that you've seen in the anime. It's not the same thing. So obviously they have sparkly outfits inside Sailor Moon, but on the musical they said just sparkly outfits. I was like, I really love that. So I'm gonna take the musical and I'm gonna make it my own. Like you know, um, there's two there's two ways I actually make this outfit. So um, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Sure, next one. Um, so the base of the last outfit that you've seen on the other side is actually the same outfit I use for this. Um, if you can reuse, reduce, recycle. Um, it's the same thing. So all I gotta do is take off that white part and then that's where the bottom part is that was in the last, um, in the last picture. But trimming, just um, make sure that you're either hand sewing, a lot of hand sewing for, for this because my machine doesn't like me in, in sequence. <laughs> Um, but a lot of the, just make sure that you're like comfortable with it. And if you're using sequins, a big tip, use lining. Your body is gonna love you if you use lining. Sequins does not like the body skin. It will cut you, it will it will damage you, it will give you tears, it will give you whatever you can imagine. Sequins is gonna give you that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just make sure that you're just doing that, adding trimming, just making it your own. Um, let me think. I think you guys kind of I think said I could, it all. I think I could say like so. I put these two references here because one is the live adaptation of uh, Demon Slayer, and the other one is like the actual reference that Angela was using uh, from League of Legends. And so I think I just wanted to bring the point across where it's like okay, like um, use use the live adaption to your advantage, right? So the way uh, Shinobu's wig was like styled in Demon Slayer, like the live action production, I was like, oh, I really like that. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna mimic that. And so you could do that with uh, like Sarah Mew and with the Sarah Mew musicals like um, Courtney did. And then you also, again, like obviously Angela doesn't look like Ahari from League of Legends every day, you know? She's cosplaying. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. I didn't want to, didn't want to break your hopes and dreams. Um, and so I put her in there. No. Okay, I didn't mean to like that. She is a gorgeous cosplayer, okay? Um, it's my boyfriend cosplay. Oh, thank you, boyfriend. So I really like the way she like did the, put the cosplay together, and so again, that's just me showing like, you know, make it your own. And also, just keep in mind that I'm just saying, like, even though um, a real, you know, accuracy doesn't have to look like the same thing. Like, you know, you can use different hairstyles, curly hair, you know, for any of your POC cosplayers that are out there. Um, you know, just you know. Make it your own, you know, go bald headed and want, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just being bold about it. Um, but do what yeah, make, you want. Yeah, exactly. No, like, seriously, just do what you want. I was like, you know, if you want to change it, make sure no boot period um, with curly hair, you can do that. If you want to do this person bald headed, I don't know, to say this person's like me, I don't know, like anything. Like, seriously, just make it your own. You don't have to be scared. Make it to your comfortability, like I said, like, there's outfits that I have to, every, I'm going to go back to this real quick. Like Cyrus outfit, um, I had like, even though she showed a little more skin, like on the bottom, I was like, but I was like, I don't think everyone's seeing my cheeks out like that right now. <laughs> like, when I, made, like, when I made that outfit, so I just made the shorts a little bit longer. I'm like, it don't have to be accurate. Make it to your comfortability. Not to mention, if you're spending all day at a convention yeah. where you're walking, you know, yeah. 10,000 steps yeah. and your phone's like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You only walk one step every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, my thighs rub together a little bit too much. Like, I can't be doing that all the time. <laughs> There's so many more practical concerns when you bring a cosplay to life. Mm-hmm. So it's not all about accuracy all the time. You have to think about what kind of environment you're wearing it into. If it's just a is it shoe, cold? is it cold? cold <laughs> 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 so cold. <laughs> 
It's like con in February by a body of water. I mean, why see is always freezing, you know, yeah. you have to plan ahead exactly. of time. Like, is this person, um, what's her name from, um, from, was it was Overwatch with the big snow coat? Um, hey. Hey. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you're not really like, trying to wear that in the summertime. Like, you need to make her a little lighter. Do that. Yeah, it's kind of hot for that. So just keep it in mind for your environment. Please don't have heat stroke and stuff. It does happen. We're cosplayers. We think we're okay. Eat, drink water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hydrate. Hydrate. Yeah. Hydrate. yeah. Right, don't don't forget to pee. Don't forget to pee. Don't forget wear to pee. Oh my God. Because yeah. I really have to pee. <laughs> But the whole point of cosplay is like embodying the spirit of how you imagine your character. Kind of like how other people do in fan art. Um, so don't, exactly, so don't hesitate to do what you want. Okay, and so uh, back to that. <laughs> I, I didn't win anyone in my seat, but No, 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 me outfit. <laughs> Um, the people that won though were phenomenal, don't get me wrong. Um, so I, I, when I made Eternal, this was like about four years ago, and uh, at the time there wasn't a lot of cosplayers cosplaying it. I think now ever since uh, Cosmos and Eternal, like the re-adaptions came out, a lot of people started cosplaying it more. And then also with the Sarah Mew adaptions, uh, a lot of people were cosplaying that at the time. And so I was like, kind of uh, like what what do I do to make it different you know like what I, I hated the 90s version of the um, eternal outfit and so I was like all right how do I make it different and so I really was inspired by the Sarah Mew uh, musical adaption and I used uh, like the wings was exactly like I tried to make it like exactly like the shows and then I even made, incorporated the brooch as well to look like the shows um, and so again that's what I mean by like using live adaptions to your advantage if you're feeling a little like, ah, oh, I, I want to be a little different, and also like I don't really know where to start, like it's a great way, it's a great source, and it's kind of my hack. And I think it's like because I'm a theater kid, and I always gravitate towards theater. So. Okay, so let's talk about making production accurate costumes. Um, so where do you start, right? So I think the hardest part is for production accurate costumes is researching the costume. Okay, and so it took me three years uh, to make just the corset of this costume. It's still not done. The costume is still not done. Um, and uh, I say that because my psycho butt really uh, wanted to make this costume. I, I didn't know if I could curse, so I was like, but. Um, so I really wanted to, uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, um, I really wanted to make it as accurate as possible. And to this day, it is accurate to the show, and I know that because I reached out to the seamstresses who made the masquerade costumes for the show, and no touching, <laughs> <laughs> and made a. I, so I reached out to them, and they were like, uh, "Yeah, we sourced this fabric from here, whatever." And so, where do you start, right? Researching. So start with reference photos. I find that um, Pinterest is really great for sourcing photos. And then I also found that, um, what other things is really good? Uh, Tumblr is really great for photos. And so we have five minutes, so I'm just gonna probably wrap this up a little bit and then I can go to the Q and A. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say was, if it's mass produced for like a theater production, it's gonna be out there. So you're gonna be able to find the stuff. So don't give up, keep looking for it. Um, again, look at all the images and, uh, what Courtney was showing you, like this course that has three layers of trimming stacked on top of each other. And so uh, after sh like searching for hours and hours on Etsy, like you're able to find like the trimmings or whatever from the show. And then you're just gonna have to use like your imagination a little bit and be able to visualize like, okay, like they, I didn't, from the picture, it doesn't look like they stacked three trims on top of each other. But you know, I saw just those loop uh, trimmings on online. And I was like, you know, this looks a lot like the shows. And so I bought that, and then I started layering them, and I was like, all right, I think this is how they did it. Um, so. And then the same thing for Danny, which I kind of uh, touched upon. I also wanted to mention that it doesn't have to be accurate. So obviously, I don't have the same budget as HBO. So I, <laughs> so uh, this was actually one of the cheapest costumes I've ever made. And I used Warbla to kind of cut out that pattern. And it looks like metal work from the show. And so I wanted to say, like, you can use Warbla. You don't have to. There's cosplayers out there like 
crazy Game of Thrones cosplayers out there that puts their wield armor, and I just can't do that. So you can use warp pockets. So thank you. We have a little Q and A. If anyone has any questions. Um, Question, yeah. Oh, um, any recommendations for sewing for beginners? For sewing? Uh, can you be more specific? I'm, I want to sew. I've never done it before. Like, where do you start? Okay, so where do you start? Um, I would say get a good sewing machine. A lot of people find them, like, thrifting. Just make sure it has all the parts. Um, start with a good, so it, yeah, it start with a good sewing machine. I don't think you need a serger right away. And uh, there's a lot of free resources online, like, really phenomenal, YouTube. like, YouTubers. Also, I'm sorry, don't go to the cosplayers. Go to the seamstresses for patterns because patterns by made by cosplayers are not good. Because they're just not seamstresses. Unless there's our seamstress, like don't get me wrong, there are professional seamstress cosplayers out there that do sell those patterns and they are phenomenal. But I think three fourths of the time I've had horrible luck with cosplay patterns. So go and get like the you know mass produced like uh, patterns that are on the market. I also do want to add, like, even though the quality of the machine is important, I don't think you always need all the works. There are a lot of fancy, over-computerized machines out there that just don't have the same power that uh, that maybe an older, heavier model might. So, you know, like, when you, I think a lot of people like to go all out when they start, and while I, I agree, you know, throw yourself in there, I would say you don't have to spend a lot of money or get all of the most up-to-date fancy equipment. Like, just just start easy, um, use cheap stuff Hand to, phone. like, mess around. Hand, Hand phone, phone, yeah. yeah. I want to ask about the, for in regards for sewing, what are the resources you use uh, in regards to sewing? So, for people who, you know, flavor for beginners like me, so Um, well, YouTube for me, um, YouTube is always going to be your best friend. Um, looking at just basic, honestly, just taking a t-shirt that you have in your house, like how it's like lined up, like basic like things, like a basic lining, a basic this, um, just things that your everyday wear is like really going to help you a lot. Um, but definitely YouTube is going to be your best friend because I didn't have anyone in my family that knew how to sew, like just YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely have been there. When I actually made this phantom costume, it was like uh, right after I did Eternal, and like if you look at the seams of, of that costume, it's atrocious. It's really bad. Don't look up close. Um, and so I was like, how the hell am I gonna make like a Broadway like costume? Like what the hell? And so I think for me, like the mindset that I had was is that like if someone, if like you could do it, it's a passion project. You're gonna keep doing it, and it's okay to redo it until it's perfect like i like would i'm the kind of person that like would seam rip it and redo it until it's perfect and it's okay to be like that it's okay to be crazy and so Behind. Behind. Oh, we're actually out of time i'm sorry um but yeah, i'm sorry um but thank you so much um for coming guys and if you have any questions you can feel free to message me over to November, it'll be in August. Okay, I mean, like, summer, 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 summer,